All right, let's get right into it here. The biggest question is after this kind of a vertical run up here, as you can see, since the late October low here, we pretty much been going up every single day, seemingly in the last two weeks and a half here. So the biggest question is, is this an exhaustion gap? Or are we going into the melt up phase and this thing is ready to tackle the all time high level? Uh, year to date numbers here spider is about 15 percent but take a look at semiconductor and nasdaq they're up 54 percent on semis nasdaq 41 percent actually semiconductor is up 92 percent all right not a semiconductor stock the entire sector of semiconductor is up 92 percent since the october lows nasdaq about 80 or so and you can see the laggers here uh you see the dow right and the transport and the small caps and the banks you can see dow about 3.6 percent here today transport seven percent russell 2000 is negative 33 same with the banks negative year today so i think only question is because right now the semis and nasdaq is the keeping propping this market up smp obviously as always sandwich is right in between i think for this market to really stretch its wings we really need to see these laggers as such as dow transport small caps and the banks they need to see some awakening here we do need to see the sector rotation occurring that's exactly how it played out during 2020 lows after a steep decline and obviously 2023 we're looking at this as a, like a recovery phase we do need to see the dow transport and the banks and the russell 2000 to catch up here and maybe as you can see with some of these numbers here transport is up 3.4 percent semiconductor 5.4 percent so they it's rare to see some of these guys to see uh, much bigger pops like this we haven't seen that in a while so maybe that might be the start of it and it's gonna happen such in a subtle way if you're really micromanaging this looking at this every single day and really trying to figure out every and each day what's going on you're you're gonna miss it you really have to like really sit back and zoom out look at a big picture and allow the market to kind of do its thing right it, it, you might not see what's gonna happen this week but maybe in the next couple of months maybe even several months we might see uh some of that rotation occurring and that's what the buyers want to see so we're talking moving average we talked about that and that that's the important uh pivotal moving average and uh, that's when we did see during may april may we see that comes consolidation bulls are trying to reprogram that primary to moving average that's been acting as resistance as you can see that pink thick moving average there they successfully pull successfully reprogrammed that primary to moving average market made that move to the upside for about two months straight and obviously sooner or later some of these moving averages some of these pivot levels they like to be retested because bears want to check and see buyers did you truly reprogram that primary to moving average did, does it really support the buyers because bears remember when it supported the sellers here and here as you can see and these were pre steep declines so bears brought it back down here and that's just two weeks ago as you can see how quickly we touched it one time coinciding with my 50 percent retracement and the island you see that green box there that's an island up gap that opened back in may so that's a triple support Perfect. primary to moving average 50 percent retracement on the fib and the island up gap from may the green box right there and we just went berserk to the upside vertical parabolic move something none of us 
expected to see because that's not how this market used to reverse and you can see right here how even though the october low was the low you see how choppy it was same thing in january you look at the chop fast here chop 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 even we see a two days move chops again couple days move chops again several days chops right even during april may a lot of choppy action here so i don't believe anyone especially after midterm downtrend bears work so hard on making lower highs and lower lows here and lost that midterm moving average as you can see the midterm acting as resistance here crashed back down met with the primary term we're right back above it also talked about the fact that midterm took about a week or so it's been fully reprogrammed once that midterm is fully reprogrammed you want to give benefit of the doubt to the buyers that's exactly what happened april may you see that blue dot and moving average here it was there for two months straight can you imagine two months of market didn't go anywhere it just moved sideways because we got the midterm there we got the primary term here i mean there's a lot of things going on bulls bears they're both trying to figure things out and but what happened was that midterm as you can see here right that midterm was never reached to the downside and subsequently we did see a very swift move to the upside well that midterm we're back above the midterm yay, 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 hooray. Hooray. not only that that up gap that's a sizable up gap. we have not seen a gap that big in a while so we do have to uh put a weight on this on this up gap as long as this up gap remains open i mean it could get filled maybe 50 percent of it or so but buyers want to make sure protect this up gap so at least that 50 percent of that up gap from this morning needs to be protected in an event that this up gap is fully filled that will let us know that this was an exhaustion gap bulls pushed everything for that last up gap and we may see some turbulence that's what it means but if that up gap remains open bulls are going after this island down gap that opened up back in early august as you can see as you can see ever since that island up gap or island down gap it was never filled you can see we saw that abrupt downturn bulls got back up came to that island gap never filled you see what happened right that's what's going on right now with this island up gap this island up gap never filled and you see how bulls bring it up and bulls are eyeing on this island gap if this island gap is closed it would act as resistance but overall selling pressure will die down Perfect. and we may see what well, let's see if it gets filled we may see it's going to act as a short-term sort of resistance or something like that but quickly you will see bulls getting back up filling this march 22 2022 peak down gap there that's a regular down gap and that's 464 ultimately all-time high is at 478 In mind this falling resistance right here this is the resistance that most traders were relying on right bulls did not want to deal with that especially the for the fact that bulls were dealing with overbought sentiment as you can see it hit overbought actually yesterday right because in the past when it hit overbought market we did see that rollover so when we got to this falling resistance with the oscillator at an overbought sentiment bulls realized they don't have enough fighting power because they're, they're tired to battle with this falling resistance so best case scenario for the buyers was to gap it over because if you gap it over 
you're jumping over this fence. You don't have to. You don't have to. You don't have to battle with this, right? Another thing you have to keep in mind, though, is that the oscillator broke above this falling red. This is a multi-month resistance on the oscillator. You can see that, right? Very rare that you will see the oscillator. This is a daily oscillator. It's bound by this falling resistance. I'll call this setup oscillator emancipation. Perfect. Because it's been bound by this falling resistance, oscillator resistance. And what happened was actually several days ago, actually about a week ago, when it recovered above the midterm moving average here, as you can see, once it stayed above the midterm right here, that was the uh, signal that it flared. That oscillator emancipation, the oscillator breakout has occurred. I think because oscillator was finally free, broke above the falling resistance you see right here, right? Because of that, once it got down to that falling resistance, it had one more push to break above uh, the resistance here, but really gap it over. A gap one here up gap two up gap three this was an up gap two but that's close so it's one two three four we're only going to count the ones that are still open so there are four up gaps versus three down gaps until 464 there so it's gonna be the battle of the gaps I would have to say that 446, 440, that up gap from this morning, that gap is sustained. Bulls will find a way, ladies and gentlemen, to go up to battle with the boss bears because boss bears have retreated back to this level here, 450 ish, that island down here. Let's see here. Let's put a line there so we know 455. All right, 455, 452. That's where the boss bears are residing today. Just retreated to this level today after seeing the bulls marching here. Nonetheless, that oscillator is overbought on the daily. As you can see, it's not a thought. When you see so much of a bullish momentum, it, it, it could mean in the short to micro term bearish. But that does not mean that move is over. You see how we saw about uh, maybe a week, several days of pullback. And you can look at that as a bull flag here. And then market move made it another leg higher. So if we do see some sort of a short term pullback here, maybe a consolidation or some sort. 446 possibly 444 or so needs to be held for the bulls to kind of uh, maybe even you know have that oscillator come back down retest that pivot as new support and then get right back up and in that process of that oscillator coming back retesting and getting back up we may see this thing doing this and possibly going back 